Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show where I talk about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Dare Me. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Obviously, the squad is going to regionals and everything, and it's a very exciting time. And it seems like everything's kind of falling into place because you see the whole situation with Addie and Beth, and it seems like they're kind of back in a good place. And last, the end of last week's episode kind of made it seem like that. But then there's this whole situation of like obviously like Matt dropping off uh, Colette. There's such that look on um Addie's face and it's that thing of like not quite knowing where her mindset is because it almost looks like she looks it there's this look on her face like she's so disgusted to see Colette and her husband together but at the same time it's just kind of like I guess it's just because it's like why are you so why do you kind of hold on to something that obviously you don't care that much about because I'm sure for Addie it looks like literally every chance you get you kind of push away you run away from that life yet at the same time it seems like you're always trying to run back to it you're too scared to let go that's what it kind of you know feels like so there's that whole situation but also like it seems like Colette and Riri's mom would kind of bury the hatchet which was kind of interesting I guess like everything Matt said last night last night geez, last episode ended up kind of like resonating and so that ended up being a very interesting situation of just kind of like, oh, them kind of being positive. It's like, oh, yeah, look, Riri's here, too. That's awesome. Her showing support for the team and everything. That shows character. And, you know, Colette's, you know, I, you know it's just like the there's there is this awkwardness to it, but it's like they're both trying to be, you know, trying to be professional about the situation. But I love that thing from, um. Riri's mom being like, oh, like, uh, you're in a non-smoking section. I hope that's okay. And she's like, oh, no, it's fine. Like, and Colette's like, that's such a disgusting habit. Of course it's fine. And, uh, you know, uh, Riri's mom is going on like, yeah, but I know plenty of non-smokers who start, who run to the cigarette because of uh, pressure. And then uh, you have uh, Colette being like, uh, this isn't pressure. This is winning. And kind of walks away smiling, and that smile quickly disappears. It's so interesting the mask that Colette wears. Because that's another thing that's the whole conversation is like, what's the real you? You put on so many different masks, and it's hard to say what's really you and what's just another mask that you're putting on, you know? So it's like obviously this whole thing is getting to her because it's not just this, it's literally everything. Matt's blowing up her phone with text. The fact of the matter is she's trying to. Cause because rather than ever responding to Matt, what I mean, uh, responding to uh, Will, what did she do? She called Matt. You know, it's like, oh, hey, yo, you know, it's like, there's a part of her, it seems like feeling guilty about it. Because it's like, no, no, I got to talk to my husband, I got to check on my baby. Uh, because it's the right thing to do, because they mean so much to me. But also, it's just all those texts from Will. The fact is, she find, I think she's finding herself even slightly tempted, I think, makes her feel guilty. It's like, no, 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 I gotta be, I gotta, I gotta be a good mom, gotta be a good wife. Like, that's what, I, that's what that vibe kind of, you know, reads to me, but, you know, and, uh, for her, it's like, you know, she's like, I didn't think it'd be this hard, you know, be, being away from you. And it's just like, like I said, it's just, it seems like the guilt is kind of eating away at her. I mean, to be fair, it's already been eating away at her for a while now, and it's just like, especially under the last circumstances, her and Will kind of got together. Just it's, it's this intoxicating ride, and she ends up kind of explaining this to Addie later on. I think it's kind of interesting about the whole fact is that obviously she was kind of spiraling. Matt grounded her. Like the fact of the matter is, she she's kind of basically saying that Matt and her daughter are kind of like the, uh, or what's important. But the fact of the matter is like. But Will just, it, that, it gets you spinning again, and she likes it. Like, like I said, Will is meant to be like this ride, but she causes her heart to kind of, you know, start, you know, getting caught in her throat type of situation. And it, the fact is, it's like, she's getting so caught up in the moment that, you know, but for her, it's like her family and all that is what kind of matters the most. And it's so interesting with this whole conversation, because you can obviously tell Addie's looking like, you know, it's like, because, you know... Colette's like, oh yeah, like, kind of keep your emotions in check. Don't, this isn't a situation where you need to let your emotions control you, but Addie's like, what about situations where obviously your emotions are a big part of it? Where, you know, it's like, you know, what about the whole you and Will situation? So, because I think at the same time, Addie is basically trying to figure out where she stands in all of this as well. Because, I mean, once again, like, 
the whole complicated nature of it all. Like she was supposed to wait back there for um, Beth because Beth was like, yo, when's this all, you know, it's like, oh, you're going to go hang out with coach. And she's like, no, I'm just going to say bye. And like, you know, me and you will hang out afterwards. Go hang out with, with your parents because her mom shows up at regionals and it's like, oh yeah, like uh, there's a dinner and everything. And I think obviously Beth was under the impression like, oh, it's just going to be me and mom. It's like, oh, you're, you're going to be basically drinking your ass off. But her mom's like, no, 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 no. And Beth ends up going to the dinner, and lo and behold, it's her dad and her mom, which she was kind of reluctant about. But then she actually started to enjoy it because it was actually fun. Because I think it was that moment of just kind of like, for a moment, you forget all the bullshit, and just you just it felt like old times. It felt good. It felt right. But then you can tell it just kind of all fell apart when like, oh, your other daughter kind of the moment she you know moment shit goes wrong with her, oh, you go running, and it's just kind of like right. We're not that important to you. I'm not that important to you. Like, they're all, they're going to come first, aren't they? You know, I used to be something special to you, and now it seems like I'm not. And then her mom's not making it better because her mom's like, oh, yeah, like your dad, oh, he's trying to, you know, he, oh, we can get whatever we want to. The tab is open. It's like, oh, drinks for everyone, desserts and stuff like that. And it's just kind of, because it's like, for whatever reason, she, her way to kind of compensate with this whole situation because the best way of dealing with it is kind of turning inwards. And it seemed like her mom's way is just kind of like kind of going all out. And she's just kind of like, how we'll make him pay all this money. Ha, 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 ha. But Beth kind of walks away. She's like, what's wrong? And she's, Beth is like, this isn't what I want. I didn't want none of this. Like, you trying to like, you know, she, she sadly, she just wanted a family. But it's just like, it's all turned to shit. And it's just, it's not what she you know, because I mean, for one, she even showed up to dinner not expecting this, but you know, you gave her that fault. So this, you know, this feeling of like, oh yeah, this is us almost having that normal, normal seat back in some shape or form, but it just kind of got spit in her face. And obviously she was kind of like flipping out because of the whole situation. And sadly, you know, Addie wasn't there to kind of help calm her down because, you know, Addie keeps her grounded. And there's, once again, there's that whole conversation that came up before it's a, uh, with Riri about the whole thing about, like, there's a whole thing between Addie and Beth. It's like, oh, yeah, like, why did they get a room? To, like, they they made this, they made set up a situation so that they could get a room all to themselves. It's like, oh, yeah, it's like that summer camp thing, which Riri was kind of like, yeah, but it isn't just that. It actually run. there's a lot of stuff there, which... <clears throat> I'm so curious to know what that is. Whatever it is, it seems like some people know. I mean, it seems like Riri knows more than other people about, like, Addie and um, Beth's situation. But, uh, yeah, she kind of broke her promise to uh, Beth and was actually hanging out with Colette. And, that, and I think that speaks volumes. It's actually interesting, the parallels of that whole thing of, like, when when the coach comes calling, like... Addie will drop everything for her, but also, you know, the same argument could be made about, like, uh, Colette and Will, that she would kind of basically do the same thing as well, which is, I, I never really thought about that tonight. I should also bring this up, um, uh, some things I found out, uh, the one, the actress who plays, um, Addie, her name is Horizon, which I was like, that's a dope-ass name. Plus, it, she spelled, it's spelled slightly different, too. So I was like, oh, that's cool. And I think I also found out uh, the actress who plays Beth, her name is Marlo Kelly. It's Australian. Like, somewhere, like, not less what I was reading. So I read somewhere. I don't remember where it was, but I was like, wait, she's Australian? Which I'm like, dude, if you're unaware of this, your first time hearing it, I get giddy about accents. I love when I found out, like, holy crap, wait, you're, you're, that's not your natural accent. Because it trips me out because it's going to be weird because obviously I've heard her as Beth. And if, you know, if she isn't, in fact, Australian, like, if I actually hear her Australian accent, I'm like, oh, because, like I said, stuff like that kind of trips me out. Uh, so that was, that was just kind of, you know, interesting little tidbits I found out. But uh, regardless. Uh, but circling back to it, obviously the whole point is like, yo, it's regionals, we gotta bunker down and stuff like that. But because of the day that Beth had previously, she kind of goes after Tassie of being like, oh yeah, you, apparently you can't handle your damn liquor and stuff like that. Um, uh, but, but I forgot what the whole thing she was saying at base. Well, because basically it's like, you know, uh, yeah, like, you know, dad had to come run into you. It's like, yeah, but I basically Tassie, once again, the whole back and forth of Tassie being like, Oh yeah, dad was with you, but he, what did he do? Like when I called him, he came running. So that speaks volumes. But then like Beth got down low and was kind of like, oh, don't get it twisted. You're acting like you're some princess. It doesn't last. Basically, once again, it starts off all pretty and stuff like that, but eventually it turns to shit. So, you know, 
you just end up laying uh, face flat on the mat, which Tassi was like, well, you know all about that. I that that comeback didn't turn out the way I did because I don't think she knows about the whole like I thought she was going to go real like vicious I thought she was going to say some shit related to the Kurt thing like I thought she was going to go down that lane but to be fair there are very few people who know about the Kurt situation uh that being Will um Addie Beth and Colette, no one else outside of that group knows, but that's why I was kind of still worried about because I was like, is that what that's supposed to be? But nevertheless, um, but it's like, no, instead she was referencing the fact is of like, oh yeah, but like your bestie, like Addie, Addie kind of basically left you and dropped you uh, for a new uh, Queen Bee on top, that being coach. So sticking that dagger in super deep because Addie, it's like, legitimately Beth's kryptonite and you can tell that bothered the shit out of her but it's kind of like you know uh Addie is like kind of get your stuff together Beth like we need to kind of do this so when it's time you know for their side of things uh Beth pulls Colette I mean I'm Addie aside and it's like you were with her weren't you and she's like and she's like I just don't get it what does she have that I don't the fact of the matter is basically saying that Addie just kind of goes with the flow of things and it's just like you never say what it is that you actually want. So for once, tell me the truth. What does she have that I don't? And she bluntly says, she's not you. I was like, fuck. It's like, Addie, you pick the shittiest time. But at the same time, it's like this whole thing between them has been crumbling the entire time. I mean, especially because Beth just looked at her phone because, oh, you left your phone behind. It's like, Oh, who's in our background? It's not a picture of Beth and, um, her and Beth, uh, like it is on her phone. It's her and, it's Addie and Coach, and it's like, ooh, that, that dagger going, going deeper and deeper every time, and then it's like, like I said, it's like they've been kind of grasping onto what was already there, but Colette showing up kind of changed everything, because, sadly, Colette is who Addie wants and once again this kind of feeds into that conversation about like did something happen between them where that thing that happened between them it became oh my god this is the one good thing in my life is like things between her and Addie and they stayed tight and close but the fact of the matter is it never resonated with Addie the way it did with Beth so basically meaning that like Addie like I th straight up Beth loves Addie I don't think Addie, I don't, I don't, Beth is in, in love with Addie, but Addie isn't in love with it. She loves her and she's cool with her, but she doesn't feel the same way. It's, it's, they're definitely on different levels. And I think straight up Addie is in love with Colette. So it, that's the complicated thing. And it, her being like, she's not you because of the fact that the matter is like, because Addie feels trapped because it's like, I've kind of got to bend so much of my life to you. Like, I got to be there for you and stuff like that. But at the same time, you know, for uh, Beth, it's like, but you, why am I not good enough, you know? So it's a, it's a different thing where it feels like, Addie feels like Beth is always dragging her. It's like, I'm always being anchored to you. I can't just be me. I can't be free because of you. But at the same time for Beth, and, you know, I, I think I've talked about I've I think I've definitely talked about this before in the recordings. Like, Beth, Addie is her everything because she doesn't have her mom. She doesn't have a good relationship with her sister. Well, half sister. She doesn't have a good relationship. Like, her family situation is super messed up. Every other relationship is very, like, surface. The only real deep connection she has is with Addie. So, Addie's kind of her everything. And now that that, fa that is being, like, question it's crumbling this foundation that she built this something that you know and especially because it's the whole thing of like you you're breaking my heart over and over again and it's like i do so much to try and keep this together but it's like it was already crumbling but you know it's like they tried so hard to kind of tape it back together to make it seem like it was a-okay when it wasn't you know and obviously the competition goes off flawlessly they they uh they're in you know, now they get to go to, like, state and stuff like that. And that was the whole point that Colette was trying to make. is like, focus on this right now. Let everything else kind of fade away. Like, when you get to states and stuff like that, then, like, you know, it's like, this is this is for you, no one else type of situation. But as they're celebrating, I'm legitimately thinking about coming on. I'm like, oh, this is going to go bad. Because let's not forget a little thing that Addie doesn't know. We, as the audience, know Beth still has that recording of Will and um, Colette, I was like, oh, it's it's done. I was like, dude, I was like, Beth is going to 
burn Colette for this. I figured as much. I was like, oh, that recording's going to go out there, but it never did that we know of. And so obviously everything, you know, it's like the bus ride back. It's like she's looking at the wall, like the picture of them together. Uh, so it's just like, I think, you know, because even in the voiceover, um, Addie's like, she always thought of herself as a good person. But the fact of the matter is that shadow, it's, it's oh, it's not something you should shy away from. It's a, kind of like that desire and that what you want. It's, it's not something you should feel bad about. And that's obviously that's another thing, because like, what did uh, Colette say last episode? You should never feel bad about going after what you want or wanting something so deeply. And she wants, you know, Colette. She doesn't want, you know, Beth, you know, so... That's what, but I think at the same time, it's a combination of she does feel guilty because once again, everyone else is around each other celebrating despite everything. Like Tassie still has friends and stuff like that. And, but who's there back there alone? Beth. Beth is literally the only one that kind of has no one. I mean, you know, Addie's in the same way too, but she's so focused on her own goal of like, oh, Colette's in front of me. So there's that whole situation. So, but then it's like, all right, so where's this all going to take us? Lo and behold, she gets a call in the middle of the night by coach. And, you know, she goes to, like, the hotel place and everything. And I was like, okay, so we're circling back to that intro. Because the moment that intro played that, like, cold open, I was like, uh, well, yeah, somewhat of a cold open. Uh, the whole body falling. You see the blood spot. I'm like, that's Matt. Uh, I was about to call him Matt because of uh, the Vampire Diaries and the, the originals and Legacies. But uh, Will... Uh, that was like, that's him, isn't it? And just looking at the silhouette, I'm like, that. I was like, oh, that's... Because at first I was like, so did he kill himself? Like, what is that? And obviously Addie comes in and um, collects her. She's like, it's bad. And Addie goes over and sees Will's dead body. So comes the question, I'm like, okay. Did he kill himself? Did he get a little too, like, aggressive? And Colette did it defend herself? Like, what went down? Because the silhouette didn't seem like it had a gun, but it could have been a thing of, like, bam, he killed himself and fell backwards. But it could be a thing of, like, who knows what, you know. Because this also speaks volumes. Once again, showing you that when the time comes, in the middle of the night, uh, Addie will drop everything for uh, Colette. But it also speaks volumes. Colette called the one person that she knows she can go to, and that's, for one, it's super messed up that you're dragging a teenager into, like, your complicated shit. It's super effed up on that res on regard, but it also because you know Colette knows she can manipulate, um, that there is a level of her that is well enough, conscious enough to know, like, oh, you're manipulating Addie in this situation, and it's like, oh, this is gonna go sideways freaking fast so it's like i caught a i caught a little peek of next uh episode i won't i won't uh, i won't go into it but i'm like oh dude this is um uh, all i can say is like just we kind of known since the beginning oh things weren't going to end well oh yeah you know because Addie had made a point even at the beginning of the series it's like she didn't want things to play out like this but it's like it was too late to stop everything from happening like the the dominoes had already start rolling and the fact of the matter is i'm like in general where things are in there i'm like all right so we're we're definitely going to go down that route of things ending on a super bummer in this situation no matter where the story goes it's always going to end on a bummer oh yeah i i can already see it of like oh yeah this is going to end bad like colette in court addy in court like being arrested and being charged as accessories and covering up a crime, like jail time type of situations. That's how I'm reading this. I don't read this as like, a, oh, we're going to get away from it. It's like, oh no, this is this is going to be a sad, sad ending. Like no matter how this whole situation ends up playing out, but uh, I am very, very interested to see where all this ends up taking us going forward into the next episode. Because there is a whole situation from the very beginning of the series, like that. Uh, that future moment that we got to circle back to, you know, it's like, you know, and how Beth is going to be mixed up in this, what role she might have played, like I said, depending on whether she released that video or not, maybe that's something that hasn't even come out yet, maybe, because obviously, like I said, Will got very obsessive and stuff like that, not unless it's a situation where Colette found him like that, but it's like, oh, crap, I showed up at the crime scene, because it could have, because now I'm sitting here thinking about it, it could have not even been a suicide thing, could have been, but it could have been like, well, he, she was there, so her fingerprints being all over the place, it's like, it's kind of on her, maybe that's what it is, 
or maybe she stumbled across it because it actually Kurtz that ended up killing him because obviously there's bad blood there. Who, who knows? We'll kind of have to wait and see where all the pieces lie uh, in the next episode. It's going to be crazy. Uh, but really, that's all I want to talk about. So the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, all to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.